properly applied, one volume of water will cool 300 volumes of burning fuel. We use water to attack fire directly, assist other methods of fire attack, and to mop up fires. Water has long been recognized as a universal fire suppressant, and many techniques have been developed to carry it and to apply it. However, water is not always plentiful and must be applied properly if you are to achieve the best results. Therefore, how you apply it is most important. Fire results from a combination of fuel, oxygen and heat. The forest provides the fuel and oxygen, of course, surrounds the fuel. The initial heat can be provided by lightning or by any number of human causes. Water is one of the most effective agents which can be used to break the triangle and stop the fire. It cools the fuel, reducing the temperature to a point where burning is not possible. As a bonus, the water produces steam, which reduces the oxygen supply to the fuel. But remember, the triangle has a way of getting back together again. So it's essential, after knocking the fire down with water, that you put a fire line around the edge. With light fuel, such as grass, a fire line may not be necessary. But you must look for smouldering dung heaps and burning fence posts. The principle behind all firefighting with water, whether in direct fire attack, or assisting other methods of attack, or mopping up, is to break the fire triangle and keep it broken. Let us now consider how to apply water to a fire. Because water cools by heat absorption, good technique is required to get maximum efficiency. If you apply the available water in a fine spray, you create the greatest possible surface area to cool the fire. Apply the spray to the base of the flames to cool the fuel. Spray along the line of the fire and not across it, and use the nozzle and pressure most suited to the job in hand. Turn the nozzle off when it is not wetting the edge. Remember, a well-placed spray saves water and does an effective job, but you still need that mineral earth break around the fire. Step up. Step up. But spray will not do some jobs and you'll need a stream to cool the fire to allow handline construction, to help extinguish hot spots, and to knock out elevated fires. When the fire is bigger, moving faster or hotter, you'll need more water. But the principles of application remain the same. Hose along the line at the base of the flames where the fuel is actually burning. Use the correct nozzle size and pressure. And when moving between fires, turn the hose off. This gives you time to assess the effectiveness and saves water. This is important when working from a tanker because you must constantly assess your rate of use and know what's left so you won't get caught without water when you really need it. Water tends to remain as droplets due to surface tension. But with wetting agent added, the same quantity spreads over a larger area. Thus, wetting agents can be useful to increase the effectiveness of water. The equipment used to apply and deliver water varies in size and complexity. But the principles of water use are the same, whether we choose a knapsack, pumps, either low pressure or high pressure, or tankers, which can be large or small, or temporary, or even a ute with a slip-on tank. So, let's review the principles. Water cools the fuel and breaks the triangle. Water reduces oxygen supply to the fire, 
spray is very efficient, but use a stream to knock down larger flames. Apply them both to the base of the flames and follow up with a mineral earth fire line. Let's now consider the use of water in fire attack. First, direct attack. Hit the head of the fire first if you can. Use a stream to knock the flames down and then follow up with a spray. Use the minimum amount of water necessary and complete the job with a mineral earth trail. If you can't attack the head first because it's too hot or moving too fast, move along the flanks and pinch the fire off using the same principle of stream, then spray. For smaller fires, a knapsack on the head of the fire may be all that is required to stop the spread. So choose the equipment and water needed to do the job. A tanker or pump and hose line from a fixed water point will be more effective on larger fires. Select the stream to match the flame height. Remember to keep a check on how much water is left in the tank and follow up with a mineral earth fire line. Now let's summarize direct attack with water. Attack the head of the fire first, if possible, to slow the spread. If it's too hot, attack along the flank and pinch the fire off. The eastern flank is usually best. Use minimum water to do the job required and always follow up with a mineral earth fire line. And finally, always know how much water you have in reserve. Water can be used to support other firefighting methods such as dozers, hand trails and back burning. Here is a vital, fast and efficient fire line builder. But dozers are expensive and vulnerable. The line they build allows access for men and tankers to assist and support the work of the dozer. Both must be used safely and efficiently. Where the fire is close to the fire line and direct attack on the fire is difficult, back burn from the dozer line and use a tanker to control the backfire. Pay careful attention to dangerous trees on the edge and any spot overs. The dozer can be used to attack the fire directly, but be careful it doesn't catch fire. Have a tanker right on hand to assist if things get too hot. With hand trails, you can't move a tanker along the fire edge, but you can use hose lines to knock down the oncoming fire. A flank attack is usually possible here. When back burning, water is a useful supporter to put out spot fires, control escapes, and to prevent dangerous trees from throwing sparks over the line. Use only enough water to do the job required. A knapsack can be used very effectively for spot fires. It's more mobile than hose line and uses less water too. While ensuring that heavy fuels and trees don't catch fire, remember be careful not to put out your backfire. Ground applied retardants mixed with the water can save a lot of trouble with trees on the edge of a backburn but time or availability often limits their use. Let's summarize water as a supporter. It can be used to assist dozer attack. It can be used effectively off a hand trail in flank attack. 
It greatly assists control of backburning, particularly if used with retardants. For mopping up, water can be a great help. But don't forget the basics of mop up. Locate the heat source, either by feel or by the smoke. Smouldering stumps should be broken up as much as possible and dug out to expose any hot spots below the ground. Logs or any other above ground hot spot should be opened up and spread out to dissipate the heat. Then use only the minimum amount of water to extinguish it completely. To use water more efficiently, and to give you time to assess your work as you go, only apply the water intermittently and always turn off between jobs. A low pressure spray should be all that's needed to cool any remaining fire during mopping up. Even a few well-placed milliliters can do the job. Remember, one volume of water properly applied can extinguish 300 volumes of burning fuel. To make water more effective, add wetting agent to the tank. A little water can cool even more fuel and therefore will go further along the line. Mopping up is not complete until you've checked it thoroughly. So give the job that final feel to ensure that it is blackout. Water is a very useful firefighting tool. Used properly, a little goes a long way, especially as a spray where the many single droplets cool the fuel simultaneously. To achieve effective and efficient use of water, remember the basic rules. Apply it at the base of the flames to the burning fuel. Use the minimum water necessary to break the fire triangle. Always follow up with a mineral earth fire line. Measure your progressive water use. Know your reserves and you won't get caught without water when you need it.